Hey YouTube fans, what's going on? This is Verdi L. Coleman III bringing you yet another, I guess you can call it a TED talk, teacher talk. Just know that this is a video of the road to the doctorate program. Um, I just got finished taking my midterm, my first midterm as a doctoral student. Ouch! That's the first word that I kind of, that's the first word that I said when I closed the lockdown browser. I said, ouch. And taking the midterm has brought some feelings back as to the first time I took a midterm period, which if you're not counting high school, it definitely was college. You took your first midterm. And for those of y'all that didn't take it, online you, know, you took it on paper you better make sure you were good at enduring the writing as well as being able to produce the words that you needed i can remember back in the day when i was taking college courses especially english college courses they made us write in these little blue books and the blue books, you had to write so many words in it in order for it to even look like a, a complete paragraph or a complete essay, because you couldn't just judge it off the top of your head like you could when you were typing a paper. Even typing a paper was hard. So being at University of West Alabama, that's the school day right there, ooh -ah, we had some of the hardest English professors to date. The reason why was because they didn't give multiple choice tests. At least the ones that I had didn't. They gave short answer, extended paragraph, essay questions. You name it, they did it. And I do the same thing to my students now for their unit tests, so on and so on. But I said all that to say this. When I first, I wanted to talk about my very first midterm that I ever took in the classroom and the very first midterm I ever took online. And then I'm going to talk about the midterm that I just took. So, my very first midterm that I took on paper in the classroom that dealt with a intense amount of writing, I dealt with it during one of my English professors, and it was based off of the Beowulf, the Fairy Queen set of stories. And good lord, I did not realize I had to say as much as I had to say just to be able to get the little bit of credit that you do get on there. Mind you, I had an A on the test on one part of it. I had a B on the other part. But the way that the test was set up, you had six identification questions. Six. You had to pick four or five. I think it might have been like four. But you had to pick them and you had to identify what the pat what the name of the passage was that the lines came from. You had to identify who wrote them and you had to give a brief synopsis as to how that line or the lines were attributed to the, the main overall part of the story, how they how they meant something to the theme of it. And that was difficult at times, especially if you did not read. So you're in there writing and you're wondering, is this enough? Do I need to add a little bit more? And then, you know, you get there and you're thinking to yourself, maybe I should add a little more. Then you start adding a little more, but then you start thinking, mm, my professor may not, may not want to read all this. So then you get the temptation to erase it, but then you think to yourself, the more he has to read, the less of a chance that he may slash off points for not making enough discussion. So for me, the best thing to do was I wrote everything in my head. Mind you, I wasn't always the best memorizer of things. I guess you, I guess we can say that. I didn't always memorize things the best. So taking tests only raised that anxiety even higher. Then there was the second part. There's, there was an essay, a full blown essay that you had to write. And so that was like, Wait a minute, I had to struggle to write an essay in the span of a week. And this professor wanted us to write 
an essay in 50 minutes to an hour? Whew. Father God bless it. No, this was not the thing that I was trying to. I wasn't trying to do this at the time. But I knew this was what I had to do in order to get to the next level. So we had in the essay portion, you had two questions that you had to choose from two topics. And a lot of times they dealt with a combination of pieces of literature that you've read. So you have had to be on your reading game in order to even come close to being able to scratch the surface of what you read. Then you had to commit to it. And so that part, a lot of my classmates and sometimes my own, my own self, we BS through it. But BSing through it did get us those A's and B's that we needed. And so we went on and by the time we left, we would all meet up and be like, dang, our hands are hurting. Even with me, like I wrote every day in my life, but you see these hands? I wrote with both of them and I was still tired. I wrote with both, I kept cramps in this hand. I couldn't play the video game like I wanted to. I just immediately shunned the video games for a while. And that really messed me up. So my, that leads up to my first midterm that I took online. Now, at the time, Remote Proctor was a big deal, and still is now, but Remote Proctor was huge. So, this was during my second year of teaching. This is during my second year of teaching, and I was taking some basic, basic certification courses to get my alternative certification. The, the test was two hours long. I used all of the time. Like I literally had maybe about three minutes to spare, but the whole time I'm typing, typing, typing. There were basically five major questions that you had to respond in 700 or, 700 or more words. So that's 3,500 words minimum. And your favorite professor went above and beyond it cost me the use of my hands for a while but i didn't need to write anything in this couple of days i just needed to be able to click and instruct the students on what to do but the the message that i wanted to deliver that is when you are getting ready to type for a long time make sure you are in a comfortable position Please be in a comfortable position. Take the advice that the remote proctor tells you. You want to make sure that your laptop is flat on the surface. You want to make sure that you are in a stable internet connection. Because part of the reason why that took so freaking long was because my internet kept going out. Mediacom, you know we have, you know how we do. I don't like you sometimes. You don't like me. But for the most part, I did manage to keep the thread alive long enough for me to be able to take the midterm and get on about my business and rest my and soak my hands in some in some Epsom salt. Finally, there was the midterm for my doctoral program, the one I just took about 10 minutes ago. <sighs> Much shorter than the one that I dealt with but it was more difficult because I had to I had to reach deep down into my memory. As I said before, as you get older, it becomes harder to memorize things, especially when you have so many different responsibilities. Yes, I know in my year two, I had responsibilities there, but this experience was much more harrowing considering that I had to teach. I went to church today. I basically had to do a whole bunch of other things to make sure that everything was in order before I even think about breathing this test. I had to make sure that my mind was clear, that my space was clear. So that required cleaning up, that required getting into my worship time. So I managed to complete the test in 50 minutes to an hour. And I'm just gonna be waiting on the results from there to see what exactly is the 
what exactly is going to be the outcome of it. But knowing my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you know, he has my back. He put the he put the information in my head. He's going to make sure that my work is not in vain. So I'm going to have that A or that B. Well, I'm looking for an A and I'm going to keep my A average in the class. So I guess most of you out here are wanting to know how can you prepare for a midterm, be it in the classroom or remote proctor. Well, I'm gonna give you a series of ideas. They can work for either setting. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you know your material. Knowing your material is the best thing that you can do because you can go anywhere once you have the knowledge in your head. You can go anywhere and take a test. Secondly, you wanna make sure that you are comfortable if a test requires you to have a certain dress code, make sure that you adhere to the dress code, but at the same time, be comfortable because you don't want to go in wearing something that makes you feel uncomfortable. Like if you know, if you know like tight jeans or make you uncomfortable, don't wear tight jeans. Currently, I am sitting in my UWA hoodie with some red sweats on and slides. That gives me personal comfort. I even showered before I took this test. Showering helps, it helps open up your pores and it also helps open up your mind. Personal hygiene is a, is a must. Number three, you wanna make sure that your space is clean. Earlier this week, I took time every day, I took at least an hour every day to improve upon the space that I live in so that when I take the test online, I don't have to worry about Dang, why is that over there like that? Why is that dirty? Why is that not picked up? Why is that paper sprawled over? Why are my dishes in the sink? I have literally cleaned this apartment from top to bottom. And since I had a clean space, I was distraction free. This table, clean, distraction free. All right, number four. Number four, you want to make sure you have a good internet connection. Mediacom and I have fights. But our internet connection is much, much better than it was three years ago. And I have to say, it is worth paying the bill for it. Five, make sure that you have a set schedule. If you have a set schedule to know, like, if you know the exam is going to be up for a certain amount of time. Know that you got to have that window open so that you can be uninterrupted because they're going to require you to make sure that you are uninterrupted. Turn off the phones. Cut the, cut the lines. I just talked, I told my mom, I told her, I said, I'm gonna be taking my test. And she was like, yeah, turn the ringer off on the phone because somebody may or may not try to call you. And that is part of, that is one of the smartest pieces of advice that I've gotten. And I wanna pass that along to you guys. Uh, number five, I think, yeah, number five. Yeah, that's six. We're gonna say five. Five, make sure that you answer each question thoroughly. Thoroughly. This kind of goes back to number one. Know your information. One and five go hand in hand. If you answer your question thoroughly, that's less of a chance that you can get penalized for a lack of the, for a lack of information or giving the wrong information. Finally, number six. This is the most important of them all, and this is actually something that I recommend you do first. Pray. Pray. Pray to God or pray to whoever you serve. Pray that he keeps your mind at peace. Pray that he gives you the spirit to know what to choose to do in order to be able to secure the environment that you can take your exam. Pray to him to ask for the ability to remember exactly what you need to remember from the readings that you've done, from the exercises, the assignments, the discussion boards. Pray to him about that. I know that I pray and I make sure that I ask God to give me all the information that I need to keep me in perfect peace while I take this exam. Even though my hands were hurting, I still managed to keep going because I knew that the prayer that I sent to God was real. I knew that this was what I needed. I prayed about that at church today. Now, I was not playing around. I do not want to fail. I do not want to give anything less than my best. So. With that being said, apply these principles to your life. Use my stories as a way to be able to help you gain understanding. 
to push past, push forward past the future. And I hope one day to see many of you future college students or trade students with these degrees and making the money that you need to make, making the impact that you need to make and just live your best life, not just going on vacations, but live your best life by being the person that you know you can be. Be the person that your God called you to be. This has been another Silver Tone production. And if you have questions, comments, or if you want to share your own story about how your first midterm went, you can place them in the bottom below. Peace.